So let's now discuss the language of anatomy. So you will be looking at a number of new terms that you probably never heard of before. And these terms, references, regions, these anatomical terminologies, you absolutely need to memorize and must know. So we're going to begin with what's called the anatomical position. So what you're looking at in front of you is an image of a woman who is in this anatomical position. So what is this position? This is where the human body is erect. The arms are at the side. The palms are facing forward. The feet are together. The head is level. And the eyes are directly facing forward. So please note, anytime you look at the body, you always must assume anatomical position. Until I tell you otherwise, this is your default position that you must assume. Now, as far as right versus left, so let's talk about that. And let's look at image that's labeled B, all right? So I'll highlight right and left. Please note, when we designate right versus left, it is that person's right and that person's left. It is not your right and it is not your left. So this image of this woman who is in this anatomical position, the right is her right and the left is her left. So if I draw a heart, okay, so here is my heart and you're looking at the heart, you will assume that this is the right and this is the left. Supine basically means a person is laying down in the anatomical position. So basically they're facing up. When someone is in the prone position, that means the person is lying face down. So their back is facing up. We also have what are called directional terms and references. So they come in pairs. So we have the superior inferior pair. We have the anterior posterior pair, anterior also known as ventral, posterior also known as dorsal. Then we have what's called the proximal distal, the medial lateral, superficial deep, and the contralateral ipsilateral. So you want to think of these as pairs. So let's begin with superior inferior. When we say superior versus inferior, that means are we going towards the head or are we going towards the feet? So in other words, if we are going towards the head, then that's said to be superior. If we're moving towards the feet or if we're going towards the direction of the feet further away from the head, then that's referred to as being inferior. So an example would be, let's say, the head versus the feet. So the head is superior to the feet, while the feet is inferior to the head. We could also say moving superiorly, that means we're moving up, or we're moving inferiorly, moving down. The next pair is anterior, also called ventral, posterior, also known as dorsal. So when we say anterior, that means we're moving towards the front part of the body. Remember, we could also say ventral. So take note of the direction of the arrow, all right? So we're moving towards the front. If we're looking at the back, then we use the designation posterior or dorsal. So we could say that the breast is anterior to the shoulder blades because the shoulder blades will be in the back, while the shoulder blades is posterior to the breast. The next pair is proximal versus distal. So when we use the word proximal, that means we're moving towards the point of attachment or we're moving closer to the trunk of the body. And if we move further away from the point of attachment, further away from the trunk of the body, then we use the term distal. So if, let's say we're comparing the armpit versus the hands. So the armpit would be proximal to the hands, while the hands is distal to the armpit. We could also say that from the hands moving towards the armpit, we are moving proximally. We could also say, from the armpit to the hand, we are moving distally. The next term is called medial lateral. 
Now, before I go into medial versus lateral, I want to talk about the midline. Okay, so the midline is an imaginary line, as you see with this dash purple lines, that divides the body into equal right and left halves, sort of like a book. So imagine that you have an open book. So when you have that open book, the gap is referred to as the midline. And of course, you have two equal halves of that open book. So this term is referred to as bilateral symmetry. So bilateral symmetry is basically dividing the body into equal right and left halves along this imaginary line called the midline. Now, emphasis on the fact that this is superficially, right? We're not going to quite see bilateral symmetry when we go deeper into the body, as you'll see later. So I'll make a point to point that out to you. All right, if we are moving towards this imaginary line, this midline, then we are moving medially. If we are moving further away from the midline, then we are moving laterally. How about if we compare two parts of the body? Okay, so let's say the navel or the umbilical versus the hip. So we would say that if we are going from the hip to the belly button, the umbilical, then that's referred to as moving medially. If we go from the belly button, the umbilical, to the hip, then we are moving laterally. The term superficial deep, what is that? Well, superficial just means moving towards the surface. If we say deep, then we're moving further away. So let's say we're comparing the skin versus muscle. So skin is superficial to muscle, while muscle is deep to skin. We could also say moving superficially. So if we're going from muscle to skin, we are moving superficially. If we're going from skin to muscle, then we are moving deep. The last term is contralateral and ipsilateral. So contralateral means on opposite sides of the body. So for example, the right hip versus the left hip, they are contralateral because they lie opposite to each other. If we use the word ipsilateral, that means they're on the same side. So for example, the right armpit is ipsilateral to the right arm because they're on the same side. So let's look at this slide and apply the various directional terms or references that we just went over with the previous slide. So once again, these come in pairs, superior, inferior, anterior, also called ventral, posterior, also called dorsal, proximal distal, medial lateral, superficial deep, contralateral, and ipsilateral. All right, so let's look at this image of this woman who is in anatomical position. So once again, if we are moving towards the head, then we are moving superiorly. And if we're moving towards the feet, then we are moving inferiorly. What about if we compare, let's say, the forehead and the chin? So the forehead would be superior to the chin, while the chin is inferior to the forehead. So we'll look at this image of this man, and who is also in an anatomical position. So if we are moving towards the front, then we are moving anteriorly, also known as ventral. And if we're moving towards the back, then we are moving posteriorly, also called dorsally or dorsal. So let's compare, let's say, the nose with the back of the head. So the nose lies anterior to the back of the head, while the back of the head lies posterior to the nose. Then we have proximal distal. So when we say proximal, once again, we're moving towards the point of attachment, towards the trunk of the body. And if we are moving away from the point of attachment or away from the trunk of the body, then that means we are moving distally. So let's compare the knee versus the ankle. So the knee lies proximal to the ankle, while the ankle is distal to the knee. Why? Because the knee is closer to the point of attachment, it's closer to the trunk, while the ankle lies 
further away, lies distal to the point of attachment or the trunk of the body. Let's do medial versus lateral. So once again, we find that midline, right? That imaginary line that equally divides the body in equal halves. So if we are moving towards that midline, then we are moving medially. If we are moving away from that midline, then we are moving laterally. So let's compare the breastbone with the right breast, all right? So we are comparing the breastbone with the right breast. So the breastbone is medial to the right breast, while the right breast is lateral to the breastbone. How about superficial versus deep? So once again, if we're moving towards the surface, then we are moving superficially. If we're moving further away from the surface, then we are moving deep. We compare, let's say, skin with bones. Okay, so we're comparing the two, skin with bones. I think we all agree that bones lie deep to skin, while skin is superficial to bone. The last pair is contralateral versus ipsilateral. So let's look at this image over here, okay? So the two lungs, the right and the left lung, are contralateral because they're on opposite sides. Whereas if we compare, let's say, the liver, right, with the right lung, the right lung and the liver are ipsilateral because they're found on the same side. Don't forget, we always assume anatomical position. So therefore, this is the right and this is the left. Furthermore, when we look at this image right here, when we go further beyond the skin, we are going deep to skin, I think we can all agree that we no longer quite see equal halves anymore. They're not so bilaterally symmetrical anymore as what we saw in the previous slide. So once we go beyond the skin and start going deeper into the body, we lose that bilateral symmetry because, as you can see, it doesn't quite look so symmetrical. So if we compare the liver, we don't have an equal half of that liver on the left side of the body. Most of that liver lies on the right side. Same token, if we look at the stomach, so this is your stomach. Most of the stomach lies on the left side of the body, not the right. So once we start going deeper once again, we lose that bilateral symmetry that we see when we're looking at the body superficially. Look at these images, study these images, and then that way you start becoming more familiar with these directional terms or references. So this slide shows us a table of the directional terms that we just went over. So I would like you to study this table, look at the examples that are given. The only thing that is missing here is the contralateral and ipsilateral pair. So please take note of that. So we have what are called regional terms. These are names given to specific regions of the body for reference. So I'm leaving it up to you to memorize these various regional terms. Once again, you must know these regional terms. Now, one thing I do want to point out are this asterisk symbol where I put it right next to two or more terms that mean the same thing. So for example, if we look at the palm of the hand, we can call the palm of the hand, this region of the body, as either the palmer or the volar. It means the same thing, basically the palm of the hand. Another example is let's say we're looking at the back of the elbow. So we could refer to that as the olecranol or the cubital. It means the same thing, the back of the elbow. So take the time to study and memorize these various regional terms.